the idea that a family like my family in Argentina could have something to protect themselves from the government is incredibly attractive to me. Hi, I'm Zach Weissmuller for Reason TV, here with Wences Casares, founder of Zappo, an online Bitcoin wallet. Wences, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for having me, Zach. You are originally from Argentina. Yeah. Uh, you actually brought the first internet service provider there, and you founded the financial services company Patagon. What actually brought you from more traditional online services to the wild west of Bitcoin? When I saw Bitcoin uh, for the first time, I thought it was the most revolutionary thing I've seen in my career, together with the internet. Um, I felt like we have done collectively as an industry a very poor job at really improving finance. If you think about what the average checking account looks like today, and debit cards and credit cards and ATMs, it's pretty much the same as 30 years ago. And pretty much the same percentage of the world population has access to those services, which is a very small percentage. And I was losing hope that technology was going to change that until I saw Bitcoin and I said, oh my God, this is, changes everything. It may do for money what the internet did for information. Did your experience growing up in Argentina inform your understanding of Bitcoin at all? Definitely, yeah. I mean, uh, I grew up in Patagonia in the southern part of Argentina. And while growing up, I saw my parents lose everything three times for very different reasons, but always related to the Argentine economy and the currency. Sometimes it was uh, because of hyperinflation, another time because of a, a, a huge devaluation, another time because the country confiscated bank deposits. So do you see Bitcoin as an antidote to um, national currencies that can just be endlessly inflated? People make Bitcoin more complicated than it is. And the three things that matter in Bitcoin are one, that nobody controls it. No, no person, no group of people, no company, no country controls it. That's crucial and it would not be interesting without that key feature. It's easy to say that it's not very easy to design a system that really works that way and Bitcoin has been designed that way. Second is that there will never be more than 21 million Bitcoins and nobody can change that. If that wasn't the case, I wouldn't be interested being Argentine. Number three is that if you own any Bitcoins, you can send them to anyone you want anywhere in the world without asking anyone's permission. Those three things make it by far the best form of currency we've ever seen. The latest issue that's been plaguing Bitcoin is this idea of a hard fork in the blockchain where yeah. anytime there's some sort of update in the core technology some people don't update fast enough and there's two versions of the blockchain running and they eventually have to be consolidated based on what a majority think is the correct version the worry now is that people are saying the blocks are too small to process payments quickly enough and that this is going to turn into an unresolvable situation where we forever have multiple versions of the blockchain. Are you concerned about this? I am not concerned to the point of uh, being concerned about Bitcoin. I think it's a very important issue. Um, I think it's important at two levels. At one level, it's important to increase the block size, in my opinion, for Bitcoin's scalability. I don't think it's a good idea to restrict the number of transactions that Bitcoin can do. I think we want to enable as many transactions as possible. And for that, you have to do a fork. But I think that that's one discussion. And another discussion that is perhaps more important is how do we go about doing this, right? And there, I think there are, that discussion is more important and there are right ways of doing it and there are wrong ways of doing it. And I think the, the industry is uh, trying to find the right way of doing it. In the process, we are cre creating some noise that makes people concern. There's this idea that uh, decisions are made regarding Bitcoin in a decentralized manner, that uh, it's based on consensus. I think you've called it a fatherless technology. When we have these issues arising, like blockchain size and hard forks, does Bitcoin need a father to weigh in from I don't time think so. to time authoritatively? I don't think so. And I think that Satoshi disappeared for a reason. I mean, we don't know, so I'm speculating, but I think Bitcoin is much more robust because right now we cannot depend on Satoshi to say, hey, Satoshi, what do we do with the block size, right? I think that would be a weaker Bitcoin. And I think that probably couldn't happen even if he were to reemerge, right? He gave up paternity. The baby is not his anymore. And I think that's important. As I said, that's the number one uh, key thing about Bitcoin, that nobody controls it. And it makes some things very painful, 
but it wouldn't be interesting without that feature. With that pain that comes every once in a while and you have these black swans that nobody can predict, why should people trust it? Why should people put their money into Bitcoin and, and trust it as a store of value? I think that for um, a few years, many years, nobody should own an amount of Bitcoin they cannot afford to lose because Bitcoin will remain incredibly volatile mm. and because uh, there is a non-trivial chance that Bitcoin lose all its value, right? So it would be imprudent and irresponsible to recommend to anyone that they have an amount of Bitcoin that matters to them, that they cannot afford to lose. So, so as a store of value, I wouldn't tell people to keep it as a store of value today because it's, it's very early, it's an experiment, and there is still a chance that it could fail and call it 20%, right, chance. I also happen to believe that there's a higher than 50% chance that succeeds and if it succeeds I, I happen to believe that a Bitcoin will be more than will be worth more than a million dollars. So that's four thousand times from what it is today at two hundred and something. So it it's worth having something, very little. You know, one percent of your savings in Bitcoin makes a lot of sense. Uh, but you believe that it will be useful as a store value. I think it will replace in. gold yeah. as a as a as a main inter, as the international currency that gold was for five thousand years. Yes. It will take years to get there, and then when it does, it will probably be less volatile than Bitcoin is today, but probably just as volatile as gold is today, and gold is quite volatile. Libertarians tend to gravitate towards Bitcoin because it undermines certain aspects of the state, it allows them to buy things that the state doesn't want them to buy, it allows them to just use a non-governmental version of money. What do you think of the anti-government case for Bitcoin? And does all the libertarian enthusiasm for it help it? Or does it drive the non-libertarians away from Bitcoin? Undermining governments is not what attracts me to Bitcoin. But definitely, for example, if the idea that a family like my family in Argentina could have something to protect themselves from the government is incredibly attractive to me. Um, so if the government begins to take advantage of them again, and now they have something that they can do against that and they don't, are not forced to keep pesos if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. There are many other cryptocurrencies, but no other one has half a million people who would believe in it no matter what. And a good core of that is the libertarian group. So I think that in doing so, they help Bitcoin significantly. You could argue that that strong libertarian bent or association with libertarians has hurt it a lot with regulators and with bankers. And I think that that's true. But net net, given how much that core group of people, of that core group of people, how many of the very early adopters were libertarian, and how much having that very core group of supporters helps it, I think that net net we're better off because of the libertarians. What is Zappo and what does it do? Zappo is a Bitcoin wallet. I'm fascinated with Bitcoin, and I think that the world would be a better place if Bitcoin succeeded. I want to dedicate the rest of my career to help Bitcoin succeed, and I, I want Zappo to be my instrument to do that. So we look at the biggest hurdles that people have to get into Bitcoin and, and work on them. Today, we feel like the biggest hurdles are uh, a lot of people have concerns around security. You know, if I get Bitcoins, how do I, what do I do with the private key? How do I secure my cell phone? How do I make sure that I don't lose it or my laptop? Or My understanding is that uh, Zappo take, goes to great lengths to physically secure the servers where the Bitcoin are stored. They're underground, across the world, there's biometric locks. Why do you go to such great lengths to physically secure your servers? Because we believe that no matter how good your security team, thinking that something is unhackable would be arrogant. Everything in theory uh, is potentially hackable. So the best way to safe keep something that you don't want to be hacked is to simply have, uh, have it not be connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. So people need to physically steal it, right? So we keep most of, the, of our customers' Bitcoin in offline servers that are inside um, vaults. Those vaults are deep underground in bunkers. Our main one is in Switzerland. The reason to do that is so if you want to steal those Bitcoin, you actually need to break into that bunker and a couple of other bunkers in different parts of the world at the same time. What do you see for the next five years for Bitcoin and for Zappo? We haven't yet seen the first currency crisis of the Bitcoin era, and it will be interesting to see that, you know, and, and there are candidates in Argentina, Venezuela, and many other places. Wences Casares, thank you very much for talking to Thank us. you for having me. For Reason TV, I'm Zach Weissmuller. Mm -hmm.